uh, tonight we have Dawn. Now, if you've been on some of our past webinars, you may have met Dawn. There she Ta-da. is. Hey. How are you? We're doing great. How are you? <laughs> Hanging in there. You're still alive and well. Great. Thanks for joining us here tonight. Cool. <laughs> Dawn is our uh, billing course instructor. It's an intense um, but fun course. Dawn likes to, to make it kind of light, but there's a lot of information going on in the textbook that we have. Uh, we had a question come into the forum that it was perfect for Dawn, so we asked her to come in tonight uh, regarding uh, the 1500 forms versus the UBO form. Uh, this ACS stands for um, uh, Ambulatory Surgery Centers if you didn't know. Now, the question is, Don, do the ambulatory surgery centers use the CMS 1500 form or the UBO4 forms? And here's a, a, a picture of both of those. Okay, actually, um, Alicia, that's a really good question. Um, and it's actually a question that I once had. If you don't do ambulatory surgery coding, it's not something that you would just naturally know. Um, what all medical billing students are taught is that inpatient um, billing is done on the UBO4 and outpatient billing is done on the CMS 1500 form. So an ambulatory surgery center is kind of in between both of them. So gee, what do you use? The answer is uh, both forms are used depending on what type of ASC you're billing for. If the surgery center is part of the hospital, you're probably going to use the UBO4 form. Um, because the hospital uses that form, they keep everything standardized as part of the hospital, they'll bill on the UBO form. Um, if it's a freestanding um, ambulatory surgery center not associated with a hospital, it will probably bill out using the CMS 1500 form um, as any outpatient facility would. Uh, the main difference between the UBO form and the CMS 1500 form is the CMS 1500 is basically has less stuff on it, okay. okay, less spaces for stuff. Because when you go to the doctor and you have an encounter, there's only so many things that's going to happen in that kind of a setting. Whereas when you're in the hospital, they're scanning everything. They bring you a Q-tip, they're going to scan that thing in for 10 bucks you know, on your chart. So you need a lot more spaces for everything. So that's why the UBO4 inpatient is much more complex than, say, a CMS 1500 form. So basically, the uh, my long-winded answer is, <laughs> if it's a freestanding uh, ambulatory surgery center, it will go on the CMS 1500. If it's um, a part of a hospital, it'll be billed on the UBO4. Also, I wanted to mention um, about the medical billing course uh, that I'm a coach or instructor for. Um, I really like this course, and the reason is we have the textbook c component, which is the best textbook in the industry. It's the same one that AAPC uses. So I am expecting that our students will have absolutely no problem passing the board exam. Um, we didn't uh, put a bunch of fluff in the course where students are doing tons and tons and tons of busy work. Um, you know, adult students want to get into a course, and they want to get out of the course, and they want to get a job. So we have the textbook. We have online webinars. Um, because there are different types of learners. Some people learn by reading, some by hearing, and then I'm available. Uh, people can ask questions too. So, um, you know, you can leave uh, the, you know, proper email address uh, that can forward on to me any students or people out there that have questions about the billing course. Um, you know, you can give the email address that you want them to have, and then um, I know it's our help desk address, but I don't help remember desk it off the top of my head. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. E email that if you have any questions about our billing course, and I'd be happy to help you answer any questions you might have. Um, briefly, the course takes you know about twelve weeks. Um, you know, so in three months you can start a cool new career. Um, in my opinion, there's very few things you can do in this world that you train for for twelve weeks and get out and make good money. Um, and true, yeah. this is one. <laughs> Yes, yes, it is. And with the new Obamacare legislation and more people accessing health care, there needs there's a need now for medical right. billers. So, and if you don't, I would mention too, um, um, and Don can 
correct me if I'm wrong, but you know, there is it's a lot easier to get a job as a builder than it is a coder. Yeah, uh, there's a little bit more of a turnover rate. Um, there's just more jobs available. Um, there's more builders out there needed. Um, so that is something that if you're wanting to get your foot in the door quickly, you might go ahead and make sure that you have that knowledge in billing. A lot of people start out in billing and then transfer into the, the coding when they get their coding certification. They're kind of sisters in the, in the, um, in the field, wouldn't you say that, Don? I agree, Alicia, and every single one of my billing students um, asked me the same question. Should I learn medical coding? My answer is always yes. Coding and billing go hand in hand. If you learn one, you should just go ahead and train into the other, mm -hmm. plus the fact either one is going to require continuing at hours. Okay. That's right. So, okay, so if you take the billing course and you pass the board exam, you're going to need continuing continue that. Go take a coding course, learn that too, and you're even more qualified and vice right. versa. Right. So, yeah. Those those um, uh, CEUs you get for each course will will correspond for the other. So that's that's fantastic. And um, you know, again, like Don said, if you have questions uh, in our forum, you can come there and ask them uh, with lots of people who are new or um, what would be a word for you've been doing it a long time. That sounds seasoned. nice, boy. That Seasoned. Oh, there you go, veteran seasoned. Okay, we've got lots of veterans and seasoned coders and billers <laughs> in there that can answer your questions, you know, and we learn from you guys as well. So I really appreciate uh, you, Don, for coming in and, and talking about that and taking some time out of your night. Uh, Thanks for having know, me. I appreciate it. When you when you um, you go in and take that course, you know it's 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 exciting and fun, and they go through it really quick, so you don't have to worry about it being uh, a dull. <laughs> Yeah, I don't like people to get lost in my course. Um, that's the one thing that's that I, I really do. You know, it, if you have too much content in a course, too much material, too much for the adult student to do, you know, these people have jobs, spouses, kids. They get lost in it and they'll drop out and quit. I don't like that. So when we created this, we we gave enough. Okay, we gave enough content, but you know. I said, cut out all busy work. I don't want to include right. the workbook. I don't want to include all this right. extraneous stuff. They got what they need. They'll pass the exam and they'll work. Yep. So. Thank you, Thanks, Don. Thanks for coming. Thank you.